Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Techie Code Buddy. I hope you all are doing extremely well. Your placement preparation is also going well. Well guys, in this video, we are going to solve a coding question that is recently asked in Exchanger exam. So if you are preparing for an Exchanger exam, then this video is going to be very helpful for you. But before proceeding further, if you are new to this channel, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell so that you will never miss any update from my channel. So let's start with the question now. So what the question is saying, just a minute. So the question is saying that Alex is given a number N. He has to check whether the number is a matter number or not. Now, what is matter number? So matter number are the numbers that are divisible by 1, 2, 4 and 8, but not by 10. Your task is to find the number of matter numbers in the range 1 to N. Okay, so you are given a number N. And you have to find out that from 1 till n, how many numbers are there? Who are matter numbers? Now, what is matter number? Matter numbers are the number that is divisible by 1, 2, 4, and 8, but not by 10. Now, there's the input format. You will be given a single line integer n. And your task is to find out the range of matter numbers. Or you have to tell how many matter numbers are there from 1 to n. So here is the sample test case. Till 20, you have to find out that how many numbers there are that are matter numbers. So there are two. Now, what is the explanation here? Explanation is 8 and 16 are matter numbers as they are divisible by 1, 2, 4 and 8 but not divisible by 10. Okay, actually this is the definition of matter number. So if the number... If the particular number is satisfying this condition that is divisible by 1, 2, 4 and 8 but not by 10, then for sure it is going to be matter number, right? Then if it is matter number, then you have to implement the count. Otherwise, you have to simply leave that number as it is, right? So what can be the code of this? Let's directly write the code of this and you will be able to find out the logic and you will be able to find out such. So let's go into the VS code and see the logic. Just a minute. So let's write down the code. So first of all, what we need to take, we need to take the input, right? I am writing code in C++. And from here, we need to check if the number is matter number or not. So let's call the function count matter. And in this, we need to pass this and... Uh, here we will be storing our answer, right? And then we will print our answer. Okay. Okay. So in this, what we need to check, we need to check from 1 to n. How many matter numbers are there? So for that, we need a for loop, right? So we will start a for loop that will, and first of all, the count of matter number, we will take at 0. Right, then what we will do, we will start a for loop and it will start from i equals to 1 and it will goes up to n and i plus plus. You need to check each and every number whether it is matter number or not. Now, if this number, that means i modulus 1 equals to equals to 0 and i modulus 2 equals to equals to 0, and i modulus 1 to uh, 4 and 8, right? 4 equals to equals to 0. And i modulus, just a minute, here should be a gap. i modulus 8 equals to equals to 0. And i modulus 10 is not equals to 0, right? Just a minute, is not equals to 0. So, if all, all these conditions are satisfying, then we can say that the number is matter number. Okay. And just we need to increment the count of count in that case. And first we have done with this. Then what we will do? We will simply return count. Right. Then here we need to print the count. So, we have done with our code part. So, let's run this code for the sample test cases and the, the sample test cases are 
20 and output is 2 and 13 then output is 1 okay so 20 so let's find out the output of this So the output is 2. Okay, so let's check this for uh, the second test case was 13. Okay. So for 13, let's check the output. So the output is 1. So yeah, we have done with the logic and as well as the code part. So if you have understand the logic, then you can implement the code in any of the language you use. Either JavaScript, either Python, either Java or C++ C. In whatever language you want to convert it, you can easily convert this. Right? So yeah, that's all for today. From my side, we will meet in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and take care.